today's video, I'm going to discuss substantive text and its subtopics for auditing theory. In this video, uh, we are going to conduct discussions for substantive text by using a reference book and a PowerPoint guide presentation. We will begin the topic by defining what is substantive test. Now, substantive tests are those procedures designed in two specific purposes. First is to substantiate the account balances, and the second one is to detect material misstatements. So we have two types of substantive test. Substantive test first is analytical procedures. So if you are familiar with analytical procedures, these procedures are applied during the planning stage, the testing phase, or the consideration of internal control, or the substantive test itself, and it is also used at the completion stage. And also, another type of substantive test is test of details. Test of details is composed of account balances and testing of transactions level. Okay, in analytical procedures, the purpose of this analytical procedure is it enables the auditor to obtain corroborative evidence about an assertion. So, uh, most, uh, mostly, hindi natin alam kung ano yung talaga yung analytical procedure. Actually, na-encounter na natin siya during our management uh, advisory services. Ang pinaka-perfect example niyan is financial ratios. So, yan po yung gamit ng analytical procedures. How do we uh, provide or implement analytical procedures or the process of this uh, analytical procedures? So, I have here a list. You have to develop first expectation about the financial statements of your client. Siyempre, ikaw auditor, you have to develop expectation depending sa nature, sa size ng entity. So, if maliit na yung entity, so you are expecting na hindi dapat ganun talaga ka uh, laki yung earnings ng company. So, therefore, maliliit na figures na dapat yung makikita mo doon sa financial statements. Same as to, if ever, na malaki yung company you have to compare the financial statements with the expectations developed. Okay, so you're going to compare your expectation versus the actual figures na nakalagay doon sa financial statements ng uh, client mo. So you have to, de to develop questions for you to arrive at a certain conclusion. So you have to find significant decrease and increase of the accounts. So, bale sa financial statement analysis or financial ratios, uh, you have the base year and the current year. So, you are going to be, uh, to make um, analysis based on the base year or the previous year as to the current year if my significant increase and decrease per account. So, if ever, if the difference is significant, the answer is yes. You have to conduct further investigation. Bakit ganun kalaki yung leap ng per account? Ayan. If the answer is no, accept the account reasonable. The effectiveness of analytical procedure is affected by the following factors. First one is nature of assertions, followed by reliability of data, precision of expectation, and the last and most important one is the predictability of account balances. Okay, so in predictability of account balances, if we are going to compare income statement as to the balance sheet, income statements account are more predictable kesa sa balance sheet accounts. Another one is accounts that are not subject to management discretion are generally predictable. And the last one, relationships in a stable environment are more predictable than those in dynamic or unstable environment. Let's proceed to the test of details. Now, test of details involves examining the actual details of account balances. So we have two types of test of details. First one is test of details of balances 
and the other one is test of details of transactions. So when we say test of details of balances, it's a direct testing of ending balances. Remember, ending balances nam po ang chinicheck natin dito. Therefore, kapag nagta-test of details of balances tayo, it involves large volume of immaterial transactions. So ano ba yung mga uh, transactions na large volume? Kumbaga maraming transaction na recurring lang or routinary transactions lang. So examples or mga accounts na involved saan is cash. We have also accounts receivable and inventory. So kapag yung mga accounts na yan ang involved, the, uh, the best uh, test to implement is test of details of balances. Kasi maraming transactions, large volume, pero immaterial lang naman. Okay? So, the other one is test of details of transactions. So, when we say test of details of transactions, it's the testing of the transactions that gives rise to the, to the balance of a certain account. Therefore, ang involved dito is smaller volume of material amounts. So, kabaliktaran sila ng test of details and of balances. Yung mga accounts na involved dito are property, plan, and equipment. Diba? Smaller transactions lang sila. Hindi naman tayo bumibili, nade-dispose, at saka nagsisell ng, in, ng machineries. Uh, unless kung ang business mo is selling of machineries. Ayan. Another type of account is bonds, payable, and uh, shareholders' equity. na tayo sa effectiveness of substantive tests. So, we are going to um, evaluate the nature, the timing, and extent of substantive tests. So, sa, kapag nature kasi ang tinatanong, nature of substantive tests, ang hinahanap dito is quality of evidence. Okay? The auditor should determine an appropriate quality of evidence needed to support the desired level of detection risk. Although, the auditor would normally prefer high quality evidence. It is also important to realize na kapag higher quality kasi ang hinahanap natin, it would entail higher cost then. Ayan. Kapag timing of substantive test naman, ang hinahanap natin dito is uh, it could be performed, interim ba, or year-end. Kapag interim, so it's not one year, pwedeng six months, pwedeng quarterly, that's interim. Tingi-tigi. Pero kapag year-end, Ayan, whole year talaga. Okay, kapag interim kasi class, uh, it is less effective than the year end. So, dapat, we, as an auditor, we have to be, um, uh, we have to make sure that we can provide uh, sufficient appropriate evidence during our course of audit. And if you're talking to extent, it relates to the amount of evidence needed based on the auditor's judgment after considering the reality. So, extent. Kapag ganito ba ang risk? How many evidence kaya ang mag-suffice doon to support our conclusion? So, that is the extent. At this juncture, we are going to distinguish test of controls and substantive tests. Now, Let's proceed first to the test of control. Kapag sinabi kasi nating test of control, it provides evidence that indicates misstatement is likely to occur. Meaning, likely to occur pa lang. Okay? So, hindi pa natin nakikita yung misstatements in actual. But in substantive test, it provides evidence about the existence of misstatements. Meaning, we have now the evidence supporting uh, our previous uh, inference that there must be a misstatement. So, si test of control munang mauna, test natin yung controls provided by the management and if we yung internal control nila, we could say na there there should be a misstatement. Okay? So, mapoprovide uh, mapo yan or makikita natin yung evidence through substantive tests.